The philosophe Lison Chardin, in one single painting, seems to me to incorporate every single aspect of what I've tried to do in my work, tried to teach as a teacher, and simply as an ordinary human being concerned with the miracle and mystery of reading. And I want to show the different features. He's beautifully dressed. In fact, this fur hat and the wonderful fur coat, some have said it is meant to suggest the solemn clothes of a rabbi on a high holiday. We don't know. There is that suggestion, as there is in Rembrandt pictures, which have, of course, influenced Chardin. I like to read it differently. He's meeting his best friend, namely the author of the book. And when you meet a great friend, you dress well, like we love to wash our hands before meeting a friend. You do him the Italian word cortesia, the courtesy of heart of saying, welcome into me, welcome into the home of myself. I'm ready to receive you. He has his pen next to his reading. Serious reading means to read with a pen in your hand. What do you do with the pen? You underline, you take notes on the page, you write around the margin. What are you really doing? You are in dialogue with the book. You are answering it, you are speaking to it. And if you are very arrogant and very ambitious, you're saying secretly, I can write a better one. And that is the beginning of a certain relationship of passionate joy and love with the text. I hope our viewers can see their number of heavy coins, beautiful Roman coins. They were used at that period to give weight on the page because in these great folios, the page would, in humidity and with time, the page would bend. So you put on it a metal, a heavy metal weight. But Chardin means much more. He's having great fun. He remembers that in Latin poetry, literature has this boast, I will last longer than bronze. I will last longer than the portrait of any emperor. Horace, exegi monumentum aere perennis. I will outlive the proudest monument. Ovid says, marble and bronze and granite will not last as long as these words on the page. So he's having fun, Chardin. He says, these are wonderful medals out of ancient times, perhaps, monuments of history, but compared to the life of the word, they are quite ephemeral. They simply keep the page down for a while. Behind him are mysterious instruments of alchemy, as if he were a magician. Why is he a magician? Because when we read, through the power of imagination, there is alchemy. There are little signs on a page, and suddenly it's Hamlet, it's Madame Bovary, it's Don Quixote, it's Falstaff. What is that alchemy of magic where we collaborate with the author in giving to these little signs on the paper an immortal presence. No one has fully understood this. It needs reader and writer, we know that. It is like the alembic, something that will turn into gold, a mixture of chemicals, chemical interaction behind deep centers in the imagination, language, and suddenly something is created which will outlive its author, the book, our own life. At the end of his life, dying of stomach cancer, Flaubert screams that whore, putain, puta, Emma Bovary, is alive forever and I'm dying like a dog. It's one of the most terrible things a great artist has ever said. A, it's wonderfully arrogant. He's right, Emma Bovary will live forever. And it's full of a deep mystery of hatred. How can it be that the creator dies like a dog and this, this what? This fantastication on a page is walking across the earth immortally. 
and will not die. The persona of this man, we are told it was a Dutch friend of Chardin, himself an artist, it has become very funny. There have been delightful lectures and essays and articles on my book about this painting where they all say, but Steiner is a complete fool if he doesn't realize it's a portrait of him. This has become very amusing in England. People look at it and say it's he. I had never, I swear to you, but that is good naive obviousness, I had not seen it until people claim that quite obviously it's almost photographic. I don't know whether it is, but I can now begin to see that it does resemble me rather closely. And I wish I had seen it, because there are many, many famous paintings of readers from Holbein's Erasmus, the Endless Saint, the Endless Saint Jerome's, to Van Gogh and Picasso's Le Liseur, La Liseur. Now perhaps I know why I picked this, but it was subconscious. It was a subconscious act of autobiography. If there is a resemblance, the whole story becomes even more amusing and not to be taken too seriously. Each of these things in turn has disappeared from our lives. The private library, the great books, the folio, the ceremonious way of approaching the act of reading, the pen or pencil constantly in your hand, the sense of silence. Chardin can paint silence. There aren't many painters who can do it. They are mere supremely. They are mere even more because there's always a musical instrument, which means that the painting of silence is even more striking. Chardin can make the light speak to you of silence, and it does in this absolutely glorious painting, which is in the Louvre, and each visit to Paris, I go to meet my friend, just to make quite sure he hasn't turned the page. He's taking his time. Did you ever change in your imagination what he is reading? It's a lovely question. The size of the book, the whole atmosphere, suggests possibly an atlas, a book of botany, possibly a book of anatomy because of the scientific instruments. It is clearly a very serious reading and Chardin has captured the loveliness of concentration. And again, it's what the masters teach us. Concentration, said Malbranche, a French philosopher of this time, is the natural piety of the soul. Um, this I always try to get my students never to forget. Concentration, attention, is the natural piety of the soul. You don't have to be at prayer to be pious. You're already very pious when you concentrate on something difficult and fascinating and try to let it enter into you. We take so for granted the power of the imagination from a page. It leaves me always profoundly astonished. The mystery of light, where you see the velvet of the curtain, uh, the texture of such a painting, the texture of the paper, of the binding, of the whole civilization of the world of the book, a civilization to which we owe the images, the book of life, the book of revelation. And perhaps one last time in the French modernist, symbolist poet, Stéphane Mallarmé, when he says, what is the aim and object of the universe Le Livre, with a capital L, the book of all books, the book which will contain all books and the sum of human life, and which then, as the Bible has it, we will shut and the seven seals will close it.